Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Moonlit and Polished. In today's episode, I just want to start off by saying this video is going to be long. There's a lot of information that I want to cover. I did a lot of research and I want to make sure that you guys get this information as well before I go into everything. So, um, today's episode is going to be about dermaplaning. In my Boxylix unboxing video, I had mentioned that when I use peel off masks, they hurt because I have a lot of facial hair because I am Latina and we tend to be a hairier bunch. So somebody mentioned that I should just shave my face or dermaplane. And uh, I had been considering it for a while. I didn't know a lot of information about it and it kind of feels stupid and I want to kick myself because I have been looking for the perfect exfoliating cleanser for my face. And it turns out that dermaplaning is not just shaving your face, which is what I thought it was. It is also a way to exfoliate dead skin cells from your face. So let's start off. I'm going to look at my notes. So please forgive me for not making eye contact. Let's see, uh, dermaplaning is an effective way to remove facial hair and exfoliate the face at the same time. Uh, by professionals, the process is performed with a scalpel. Um, when it's done by a doctor or an esthetician, the cost can range from 75 to $200, which is super expensive. And some places will offer a chemical peel afterward because your face will be able to absorb the products better because it's just been cleaned of all this dead skin cells and basically just like unclogged which is fantastic another benefit of it is yes that it does shave the hairs off of your face the hairs on your face will get oil or dirt or dead skin cells and basically just kind of hold it onto your skin therefore causing acne clogging your pores a whole bunch of stuff which, you know, once again, I did not know. So let's see. The benefits of dermaplaning. Um, it's a painless way to remove hair because you're basically just shaving. I mean, when you break it down to its basic idea, it is just shaving your face. Um, but, it, like I said, it also exfoliates. The It is beneficial for all skin, skin types. Like, everybody can do it. Oily, dry, combination. It's perfect. The deep exfoliation allows for better product absorption, which I said. Uh, another benefit of it is that it helps your makeup go on smoother. This is something that once I did it, I absolutely noticed. And I did film the first time I did it, so I will include that in this video just after I drop some knowledge on you guys. Uh, let's see. It actually can help lighten old acne scars. I'm excited to see the result of this. And this is something that happens with more and continued use when you do this. Um, it's not something that's going to happen like immediately right off the bat. Like I have some acne scars here um, and I have like other things like chicken pox scars, things like that. So I'm excited to see if they will lighten or fade over time. There are some cons to it. Um, it can be expensive if you have it done at a salon or a dermatologist's office. And they do tend to, write, like, the salons mostly will be like, oh, you can do it every two weeks. And I don't know if that's, like, a, their way of getting your money or not. It's just because I haven't done it at a professional place because it's expensive and I don't have money for that. I only have money for nail polish. Um, as a hair removal, the results aren't long-lasting because, like, for instance, waxing lasts, like, I think three to four weeks. And I wax my mustache, like, for the longest time. But shaving, you know, you tend to get it growing back, so you have to do it. If you're using it as a hair removal option, you have to do it frequently. Depending on the individual, individual person's hair growth, it might grow back faster, slower, it depends. Um, it is not recommended for people with cystic acne. And I can understand that, like, when you think about it, if you have cystic acne, you have a lot of bumps and a lot of texture on your face, and basically shaving, that would be, like, slicing off ham, so you don't want to do that. Um, why do it at home? Now, this is something that I wanted to look up, because I was like, is this something I should pay for if I have, if I want to do it, like, or can I do it at home successfully? Um, it's much cheaper than paying money each month, and it doesn't seem like there is a lot to it other than like just if you want it like the doctors will use the scalpel but there are razors for you to do it at home 
So it's more of like a preference. Like, do you want to do it yourself? Do you have the steady hand enough to do it yourself? Or do you, would you rather have somebody else put a scalpel to your face? All right. So what you will need to do it at home is a dermaplaning razor. You cannot use a regular like I'm shaving my legs or I'm shaving my beard razor. That is a myth. I did see a lot of misinformation online about how, oh, well, you could just use your razor. Okay, the reason you can't do that is because a regular razor has multiple blades and the multiple blades are not at the correct angle for the dermaplaning benefits of exfoliating your skin. So a dermaplaning razor will look something like this one. This one I picked up in a pack of three at Marshall's because I always saw dermaplaning razors there and I never knew what they were. I just thought they were like for eyebrows and I was like, that's a little thick for my eyebrow. I need something like smaller if I'm gonna shave around there. Um, I picked up these because they were $3.99 and if you see it kind of just like folds and I thought that was pretty neat because then I could travel with it. Um, so the dermaplaning razor is just a one blade and the best way to do this is that when you're shaving, you're going to work in small sections at a 45 degree angle, which is an angle you cannot get with a regular razor. So that is a complete myth. You cannot do that. Not if you want the benefits. The next thing is, um, and I'm gonna cover this myth next because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about it. Your hair will not grow back thicker or more. That is a myth. The peach fuzz, or the technical term for it, is the vellus hair. Those little thin white hairs, it is physiologically impossible for that to be altered, like by shaving. Sure, when you get older, because some people, like for instance, will get more ear hair, that's just something that's happening in your body that's changing that hair. So it's not affected by a razor your terminal hair which is like your black mustache hairs and eyebrow hairs and things like that the reason behind people thinking that it grows back thicker is because when it grows naturally the tip is thinner and the base is thicker so when you shave it you're cutting off the thinner bit and then the stub is what grows out so a lot of people tend to think of that as thicker and also you know, they just got used to seeing their face without hair. So the moment it grows back, it's noticeable to them. And they're like, oh, I didn't notice it so much before. But now I do because it's thicker. That's where the myth comes from. But I have an article that I'm going to link down below from the Mayo Clinic where they completely <laughs> bash that myth to pieces. Um, I'm also going to include some other articles about dermaplaning, pros and cons, how to do it, things like that. All of that will be down in the description box. So after the razor, the next thing you're going to need is alcohol. This is my little bottle that I keep, my little pump bottle of 91% alcohol. And I keep these little, this jar of like cotton pads. You're going to need these two things as well. You're also going to need a water-based cleanser. To do this, your face has to be completely dry. So if you have a moisturizing cleanser, I would avoid using it before you're going to dermaplane. You want something that's just going to dry out all of that oil and everything. So for instance, what I did is I washed my face, then I took my alcohol and I took a cotton pad and just sort of wiped my face down and let it dry out. Also, the alcohol is good for disinfecting the razor before you use it. You're going to want to do that 100%. That's what you're going to want to do. Next, you're going to need a headband. This is just a headband that I picked up at Marshall's because let's face it, it's adorable. I use this, it's a spa headband. So you use it for when you're washing your face and you need to get your hair out of your face and all that stuff. Because you want to keep your natural hair, obviously, away from your dermaplaning area. Then, um, I actually found this, this is the Yes Pore Perfection Brightening Peel. It is a little at-home chemical peel kind of thing that you can use up to three times per week. And a lot of the research I did about dermaplaning when you go to a salon or the, yes, or the dermatologist, they will dermaplane and then they will do a chemical peel. So I decided I will do one for myself at home. Then this is another thing I picked up after looking at all my research. This is 
Go Fuzz Free. It's a facial moisturizer and hair inhibitor, which recommends to apply after shaving. And it, like I said, it's for your face. So once I did the chemical peel and I finished the dermaplaning, I went ahead and I applied this as well. This is supposed to help slow down hair growth and minimize hair growth. So I figured it's more beneficial to go ahead and try and remove as as much hair as possible and keep it from growing as quickly as it can. I would just avoid rubbing this into your eyebrows because you kind of want those. The other razors I bought, I wanted to test these out because, yes, I picked up the ones from Marshalls, but I didn't know if they were any good. So I went to Walmart, and they had these. These were the only ones they had. They're the Revlon Smooth and Perfect, and um, out of the two, I like these better. Now, there are other razors and kits you can buy, and there are also um, Sonic ones that pulsate. I found a bunch of them in the range for um, from almost $200 for the kit to I think the lowest was $10 which is a Noxima razor but that one I cannot for the life of me find refills for so I don't know if it's discontinued or what there is one that it ranges to about 40 that I'm thinking I will buy for myself so if you guys want to see a review on that later on I will go ahead and do that I also plan on filming like a three month update so you guys can see the effects of it over time all right so now we're going to get into the process first wash your face clean the blade with alcohol you're going to wipe the cotton pad with alcohol on your face and then you're going to start from the cheeks to the inside of your face like I kind of just decided okay I'm going to cut my face into fourths so I have you know like a cheek cheek chin forehead oh uh, fifths my nose as well so that's what I did and I worked from the outside in when you're working you want to pull your skin taut that was something that I did not really do very well in the process and, and you'll see it in a moment I actually have a few nicks and cuts from the razor, but I believe that is because the tip of it wasn't capped quite well enough. And I noticed that some of the more higher end razors that I have, will link down below actually have a cap on the tip. Like this one was very exposed. And because of that, when I brought the razor down, it cut me a little bit. So I'm assuming that over time, once I get used to doing this more, that will dissipate, I hope. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut to the video where I am dermaplaning so you guys can see it. And then I will do my little song and dance. Here is the before. I wanted to do a close up so you guys could see the hair on my face. I have these corner sort of sideburns. You can't really tell, but under my lower lip, I have just this tiny little patch of dark hair. And then on this side as well. And as you can see here, I have a baby hair transition that kind of just, it's thick, but not a lot. So the first thing you're going to do is disinfect the razor you just bought with alcohol or any sort of, you know, disinfectant that you have. Like, I would just use alcohol. And then after you wash your face, go ahead and wipe down your face with an alcohol pad or a micellar water that doesn't have any oils or anything in it. When you're going to start, you're going to start from the outside and work your way in. And you're going to try and keep your skin as taut as possible. That actually will help with the whole process and keep you from cutting yourself too much. And here is all this sort of fuzzers. <laughs> this is all that hair that just kind of came off. Or not kind of came off. I intentionally raised it off. So you're going to keep the razor at a 45 degree angle. And don't get me wrong, I know I said I nicked myself, and I know I said you're going to try and keep from cutting yourself. It's actually very difficult to really cut yourself because the blade does have a sort of cage of protection on it. This one not is not the best because, like I said, I bought it from Marshall, so it's like a random brand that I have no idea like if it's any good or not. The Revlon ones actually have a finer cage that is much better at keeping you from nicking yourself I think this one was just a little too cheap but just remember the important thing is to keep your skin taut work in small sections and short strokes you're not gonna try and go 
and do a huge long one stroke just short quick strokes and you should be good Also remember you are not shaving the skin under your eye. Be very careful that is very thin skin. You're just going to go where your like cheekbone, your orbital bone, that's the bone right under your eyelid starts and you're going to go ahead and just kind of shave around there. I'm trying to to pay special attention to the corners of my lips. That's where I get a lot of dry skin that collects. And I'm trying to make sure to get rid of that mostly because I do have an issue with applying my lipsticks or that my lipsticks don't look as good around the corners of my mouth because of a lot of dry patches of skin. And I'm hoping that the dermaplaning will be able to help with that. Be careful when going around your nose. That skin right at the edge of your nostril and your face is actually very thin as well. People probably don't know that, but it's one of the reasons why your nose gets so irritated when you're sick and you're blowing it all the time. It's very thin, very sort of irritable area of skin. So be careful when you take the razor around there. Don't really get into that corner. You're not trying to shave it. There's probably no hair there. Be aware that there will be tons of little hairs all over the place when you're done. I mean, I had just little bundles of hair that just fell all over my shirt and try not to get them into your eyes. Mine got into my eyes and it was really uncomfortable. It was very weird doing the other side of my face because I kind of had to switch to my left hand and use my right hand and it was just kind of awkward because I'm not very good with my left hand. But I do feel that with more practice I can get better at this. Now as you see I do have a spot on my forehead but it's not it's not an acne it's like an old old acne that is like gone and it's not even really a bump anymore it's just a dark spot. So, for example, if it is, an act, like, if you do have active acne, try to go around it. Try not to shave it with the razor. You could end up cutting yourself, and you don't want to do that. I'm doing my best to pull my baby hairs all the way back. I've noticed that some people who dermaplane will go ahead and remove baby hairs, but I don't want to start doing that because I feel that if I do, it's going to look less natural. I, I don't have any illusions of having a perfect, you know, hairline or whatever. It's fine. I'd rather, you know, have the baby hairs and not have to look like I shaved like a huge inch and a half off of my forehead, which, you know, I already have a pretty big forehead. I don't need to make it look any bigger by shaving my hair back. The nose was a really tricky area. Uh, for example, this blade is a little too long, actually. I'm thinking I might end up using a shorter eyebrow razor to do my nose next time around because I feel like the blade was too long which made it unwieldy. So it was really weird doing the nose area. Okay, so that was me dermaplaning my face for the first time. My after thoughts on this, I took copious notes afterward. This is actually, I did that on Monday night, and today is now Wednesday afternoon. So, um, immediately what I decided I was going to do is I was going to do it at night before I went to bed as opposed to when I'm going out because when you go out, you have to show people your face. And if you have a rabid raccoon scratch, they're going to think you need help. So I decided, you know, I'm trying this for the first time. I'm going to go ahead and do it before I go to bed. That way I can just lotion and sleep. And I do recommend that for anybody who is doing this for themselves at home. If you're going to do it out, you know, then you got to do it at a different place. But what is recommended by almost every single article that I saw was if you're going to go... If you're going to do dermaplaning, you definitely need to wear some sort of SPF on your face because now your skin is going to be more 
able to absorb the sun, I guess. So it recommends SPF 30 at the least. Then um, I definitely think that investing in a razor is key. I'm glad I tried it out with these cheaper razors, but I definitely think if this is something I'm going to be doing from home, I'm going to want to spend a little bit more. So I think I'm going to buy the SEMA system by Spa Labs or Spa Sciences. I don't know. It will be linked down below. But that's the one I'm leaning towards because it's not too expensive. And um, the razor refills seem to be, uh, like, achievable. They're affordable. It's not like I'm going to be breaking the bank for it. So that's the one I think I'm going to get. Then um, there is a noticeable difference in my skin texture immediately because you know I put my face creams on with my hands and stuff and I just my skin just feels so soft and I almost feel like for once I'm feeling the absorbing like of all the stuff that I have and now I'm thinking like I'm almost done with the Elemis cream that I got in my first boxy Lux, which is like an $89 cream and now I'm like I'm almost done with this and now I'm going to be getting the best benefits of it because finally my skin is able to just really take it in so that's actually really exciting also the first time I applied my foundation after which is which was yesterday I did film that but it was such a scattered thing that I decided I'm not even gonna use it but after I had applied my foundation yesterday it was magical it was amazing it was literally just beautifully smooth I really loved the way it looked and I did a very heavy makeup look not like crazy gonna be on the stage heavy makeup look but I did you know like eyeshadow and eyeliner and everything and it all just blended way better than it has ever blended before I mean my highlight blended perfectly into my blush which blended perfectly into my bronzer which blended perfectly into my foundation it was fabulous so if that's something you have trouble with and you think oh you know I've spent such a long amount of time blending my face why isn't it looking right it might be because you need to try dermaplaning. If you have tried dermaplaning and you still can't blend, maybe you're using the wrong tools, but that's a whole different thing. So I'm, I definitely feel this is something that will be improving my skin with further use. So I'm really excited to try that and see where it takes me in the end. Um, overall, this is definitely a process that I would recommend to you guys to try if you want to, if you're not scared about it. And if you have the money to do it and go to a dermatologist office or go to a spa and get it done, then, you know, more power to you. Go ahead and do that. And also send some my way so that maybe I don't have to do it myself. Um, but other than that, it is, I definitely would recommend it. If you guys want to look into all the information, I linked it down below. I tried to find YouTube videos that would be really informative, but all of them were more reviewing the tools they were using. And they weren't too informative. So I'm just going to link down... I'm gonna let her finish. Okay, I'm going to link down below all of the articles I read and all of the products that I used if I can find a link to them. But definitely for certain, I will have all of the razors available linked down for you in the description box. I can't recommend them because I haven't tried them, but if that's something you wanna look into and try at home, be my guest. If you have more information on dermaplaning that you feel people need to know, please comment down below. If you see somebody asking a question that I'm not able to answer because I am wholly ignorant and you know the answer, please, please share the answer because this is the type of thing that we really need to share about. I've seen so many YouTubers that I just know because, you know, the people have said it and they've commented on, you know, oh, I have dermaplane, I have dermaplane, and they have beautiful skin. And I look through all of their videos and they don't have any videos on dermaplaning. I'm like, okay, guys, you're a beauty guru who reviews makeup and it goes on so gloriously on you and we all want to look like you. So why aren't you telling us about this? So let's share the information and I'll be just stunningly gorgeous. All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and informative. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.